Hey everybody. The other day I was tending to one of my tanks and an old adage came to mind and that is that we are not fish keepers but we are water keepers and if we keep our water properly then we will be able to keep fish in that water successfully. And while I tend to agree with that sentiment, I think there's something a little more important in our aquarium that we keep and that is bacteria. And that's exactly what I was doing as I was tending to this tank. Uh, it's a new experimental tank I'm working on, and at the time I didn't have any fish in it, but I did have a fully functioning nitrogen cycle established. And in order to keep that nitrogen cycle healthy and functioning until I got fish in it, I needed to maintain those bacterial colonies. And in this case, what I was doing was I was feeding them. I was putting ammonia in the tank in order for them to stay good and healthy and keep the tank ready for when I was you know, ready to put fish in it. So today I want to talk a little bit more about keeping our bacteria healthy in our aquariums because we don't talk about that a lot. We talk about the nitrogen cycle a lot and you hear surface area mentioned a lot. Everybody talks about having surface area for the bacteria, but that bacteria needs more than simply surface area in order to live. And it even depends on where that surface area is will play a factor in how functional that nitrogen cycle is and how well that bacteria grows. So today I want to talk a little bit more about the needs of that bacteria. And first of all, we know it needs ammonia and it needs nitrite. It needs food, if you will. And so it has to be somewhere where water is circulating. This bacteria can't get up and go find its own food. Food has to be brought to it in the water. So it has to be somewhere where there's water circulating. Now, a lot of these needs will be met simply by putting the surface area that the bacteria is going to live on in our filter housings. That's why we do that. It's a great place to put it. Another one of the needs is the uh, bacteria needs a lot of oxygen. So again, in a filter with highly oxygenated swirling water swirling around in the back of that, you know, filter box on the hang on the back or, of course, in a... Um, canister filter you don't get that same effect but you do get a lot of movement and you got a lot of water being pulled in out of the tank especially if there's a surface skimmer you're getting that highly oxygenated surface water and so you're getting good water flow through your filter and it's giving that bacteria everything it needs but it also needs darkness. It's a bacteria that's sensitive to light and it can't live in a really brightly lit area. So once again, inside our filters is just a really good place to grow it. But it's not the only place to grow it. You can grow bacteria in the tank itself as I do in most of my tanks. All the rocks, all the woodwork, a deeper substrate. It allows that bacteria to grow and stay healthy. But you have to make sure it's there. You can't have a small hang on the back filter with minimal biological filtration if you've got a bare glass bottom tank. And you don't need a ton of filtration in your filter if you've got an aquarium that looks like one of these that's rich on the inside with rocks and woodwork and deep substrate and all that. So as long as that surface area is somewhere that's suitable, it's not too brightly lit, it gets plenty of water movement and it gets plenty of food, gets plenty of oxygen to it, then that's what you need to do. But you also need to maintain the food levels. If you've got a bunch of fish in your tank and you suddenly take a half of them out, that's going to shock that nitrogen cycle. You're suddenly reducing the amount of food that's being given to this bacteria and you're going to have a lot of bacteria dying off, which is going to cause a lot more waste that needs to be dealt with. And so you're going to have less bacteria, but more waste that needs to be dealt with. And so you can have issues simply by reducing the number of fish in a tank too rapidly. We all know that if you put fish in a tank too rapidly, you put a huge bio load in there all of a sudden, the, the, the bio load, you know, the, the bacteria needs to, to grow and to catch up with the amount, the new amount of food that's coming into it. But the same thing happens when you remove a huge amount of food. It would be like if you had a huge herd of cows and you suddenly took half the pasture away. You got a lot of cows standing around and don't have a lot of food left and you're going to have a lot of cows dying off. Same thing happens with your bacteria if you remove a ton of that ammonia. You know, you remove a ton of that bio load out of the tank, you're going to have a lot of that rich bacterial colonies dying off, which then again can start a cascade of things getting out of control. So you always have to think about those bacterial colonies. Think about that as your foundation. Everything is built on those bacterial 
colonies. If those aren't healthy, if those aren't functioning properly, nothing else in the tank is going to function properly at all. In fact, when you really get down to it, a lot of everything that happens that's the most important in our aquariums happens on the bacterial level. The, the mulm being broken down, the waste products being dealt with, all that stuff happens on the microscopic level. The fish being kept in the tank is sort of, again, it's an afterthought. If we're doing all that other stuff properly, the fish will just swim around and enjoy themselves. We have to keep our bacterial colonies good and healthy, and that will keep our water good and healthy. And then, of course, we also still have to maintain our water for the proper fish, for the proper parameters as far as hardness and pH and all that kind of stuff goes. That's all very, very important too. But again, there's more to keeping bacteria in our tanks than simply providing surface area for it. So you have to understand how it lives, what its life cycle is, its food needs, how to get food to it, all that sort of thing. So when you make major adjustments to your aquarium, think about what's happening to that nitrogen cycle as well and compensate for it. Either remove some of the cultures or add some more food to it if you need to. As in my case, I didn't have any fish in the tank, so I was putting a food source in the tank to keep those bacterial colonies alive. So I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are below. I've always considered the bacteria to be the most important inhabitant in any of our fish tanks. Without those, nothing else will be able to be good and healthy. So again, keeping that bacteria alive is paramount to keeping our tanks nice and healthy. So again, leave your comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget, I do do memberships now. I accept super thanks. That's always appreciated when I get those. And I do have another channel, Dan's Outdoors and More. Well, the title's kind of self-explanatory on that one. There's a link down below if you're interested. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.